There are seven main cylinder head designs, bathtub, wedge, hemispherical, heron, and so on. But what are the pros and cons? How should the intake and exhaust ports be like? How many times can a cylinder head be resurfaced? What is dimple porting? Which materials are available? First, we will start with the shape of the combustion chamber. The bathtub is the most common type on old and low-cost vehicles. Its name comes from the shape of an inverted bathtub. The valves are fully vertical, and by placing the camshaft in the middle, both intake and exhaust valves are very easy to operate without rocker arms, keeping things simple and saving money. This forces the spark plug to be in one side. Remember that combustion has a flame speed, so having the spark plug on one side will cause the other side to burn late, reducing efficiency. But there are many ways to counteract this. The flat part of the head is called squish zone. This squish occurs at the last moment and pushes the mixture towards the center at high speed and turbulence, reducing the size of the combustion chamber so the flame front doesn't have to travel so far. The squish zone is also found in the pistons. It is obviously located at the farthest part from the spark plug. In tuned vehicles, this squish portion of the cylinder head must be slightly removed because the air entering passes through the valve and then collides with these walls, slowing it down and reducing cylinder filling. For the exhaust valve, it is not necessary to do so and it is preferable to leave the squish area, which is more favorable for power delivery with good combustion compared to improving exhaust flow. Since the spark plug is located on one side, both the intake and exhaust ports were placed through the other. The heat from the exhaust gases ends up heating the intake port and, consequently, the air flowing inside, reducing power. Although, for carburetor-powered cars, the heat keeps the fuel vaporized, preventing it from sticking to the walls, mixing better and easily reaching the engine, increasing efficiency. Most economic or older cars use these combustion chambers like the Audi 80. Later, with the arrival of electronic fuel injection, where fuel sprays better, the intake port was moved to the other side to take advantage of cooler air, resulting in increased power. An example is the naturally aspirated 2.0-liter Jetta. 2. The wedge-shaped cylinder head is very compact has the valves tilted to one side, and due to its shape, only two parallel valves fit per cylinder. It also uses the ports on the same side, causing the exhaust to heat the intake. Having tilted valves creates a straighter duct, improving airflow compared to a bathtub-type chamber, where the air has to turn 90 degrees. The wedge shape creates a squish effect and reduces the size of the combustion chamber, ensuring good combustion which helps increasing power and reducing pollutant emissions. The spark plug is positioned in the widest part of the wedge so the flame front doesn't have to travel far. In case knocking occurs, the portion that detonates is very small and causes minimal damage. Let's remember that detonation occurs when the fuel explodes due to compression. As the fuel burns, it expands, pushing and compressing the area that has not yet ignited. This increases the pressure, and that's when detonation happens. Detonation often damages the interior of the engine. The Slant 6 uses this chamber. Of course, there are some wedge heads that uses the ports through both sides, having a bad port angle. Now, if back then engineers had been able to buy parts from JLCMC, their engines would have had better components and would have gone further. Looking at all this variety of industrial components like linear shafts, cable carriers, timing belt pulleys, or bearing accessories, O-rings, aluminum extrusion profiles, boxes, screws, any type of fasteners, sensors, and anything else you might come up with. JLCMC is preparing a new service to customize products to your needs at a very low price. For all DIY enthusiasts like you and me, this website is the best out there. It has the lowest prices. Enter now using the link in the description or first comment and get a $70 discount coupon. 3. 
The hemispherical cylinder head is theoretically the best of all. It is usually accompanied by two valves per cylinder and leaves the spark plug perfectly in the center. In fact, cylindrical vessels are the best for containing pressure because they do not have stress concentration points or hot spots like angled surfaces where they receive heat from multiple areas. It usually has the intake ports on one side and the exhaust on the other. This is called cross flow. Due to the airflow direction, cross flow aided by a camshaft with valve overlap favors scavenging. Scavenging occurs when the outgoing gases, with their momentum, pull clean air in. This causes the new mixture to enter and now push out the remaining gases, leaving the cylinder with a good mixture. By not having hot ports on the side, the air enters the cylinders fresh. The hemispherical shape also allows for larger valves as it increases the available surface area compared to a flat one. In 1951, Chrysler's Hemi engines get their name from being among the first mass-produced with hemispherical heads. However, these heads are expensive. Previously, all the valves were aligned and easy to operate. Now, because of cross-flow, the intake valves are tilted to one side and the exhaust valves to the other, making the task more difficult. The combustion chamber is very large and often causes problems with knocking. Chrysler was forced to install two spark plugs per cylinder to reduce this problem, which further increased manufacturing costs. As if that weren't enough, the wide chamber also reduced compression. One solution may be the use of domed pistons, but with more material, these were heavier and therefore had to rotate at lower RPM to minimize stress on the connecting rod. The opposing intake and exhaust ports did not favor the use of a carburetor. For these reasons, hemispherical chambers were avoided in early engines. To add more valves due to the hemispherical dome, they would all point in different directions, making everything very difficult. And therefore, to place more valves, the number four of the list appears. The pent roof. This chamber tries to be a hemispherical one, but with plain surfaces to place valves. From high-performance cars like the BMW M3 to simple multi-valve engines, the pent roof combustion chamber is widely used. The name pent roof is because the chamber is generally divided in five roofs, and if we polish the joints, it ends up almost like a hemispherical chamber. The valves are easily operated by two camshafts. What we're looking at now is a 1.8 turbo GTI cylinder head. It's difficult to see, but it is also a pent roof. Note that it also has squish areas, five valves, and is undoubtedly very interesting. Let's move on to number five, the Heron Combustion Chamber. This cylinder head is generally flat and used in diesel vehicles to maximize the high compression ratio required, which is over 18 to 1. Obviously, they are easy to build. The hemispherical dome is now on the piston, and combustion occurs here instead of on the cylinder head. This is quite bad as the piston crown tends to overheat. It may require oil injection underneath for cooling. The piston needs to be stronger, which translates into more weight and lower RPMs, although diesels don't spin that fast. Meanwhile, the cylinder head is fixed and is easy to cool with internal passages of liquid. Now, why do they transfer the combustion from the cylinder head to the piston? In a gasoline engine, we use the entire intake stroke to create the mixture. In a diesel engine, it's different. One. The injector is in the spark plug position and points toward the piston. 2. The piston now has a special shape that helps generate turbulence and mix with the air for combustion. 3. The fuel enters at extreme high pressure during the combustion stroke and burns as soon as it touches the air inside. There is nearly no time to mix or go back to the chamber in the cylinder head so it is forced to burn in the piston. In 1960, gasoline engines such as the Ford Kent had a Heron combustion chamber. 
An advantage is that when the valve opens, there are no walls on the sides to restrict the flow of gases. Also, the piston concentrates the mix in a centered and uniform size chamber, and the flat sides of the crown squish the mix in, reducing knocking and increasing efficiency. The con was a heavier piston. 6. The flat cylinder head with pre-chamber it is a derivative of the previous head with a small pre-chamber housing, the diesel injector and glow plug. This is also widely used. Combustion begins in this area and is propelled toward the piston. The main advantage is that it reaches a higher velocity than the diesel injector, thus increasing the combustion rate. Obviously, today's injection pressures are higher, achieving higher velocities and the pre-chamber or indirect injection is disappearing. 7. The Flathead They had their days with Ford's V8 flathead engines and many others, but they're inefficient for today's standards. They survive as gardening machines and similar equipment because of their simplicity. This head only has the spark plug. It uses the valves inverted in the side of the block. The combustion chamber is very long. It's also difficult to achieve high compression and good gas flow. By the late 1950s, flatheads were no longer in mass production. How many times can a cylinder head be resurfaced? That depends on the car. Older cars can be resurfaced more than modern ones because they were born in an era where compression wasn't as high. Resurfacing them simply increases power. In modern cars, you can approximately take one millimeter and the goal is always to remove the smallest possible amount each time it needs to be machined. The amount required for resurfacing depends on how badly the head was bent. One factor that affects this is whether it was overheated or whether the screw loosening was done in the correct order when removing it. Even if the head is in perfect condition, it must be resurfaced before reinstalling, because the metal gasket rings often depress the surface and a seal cannot be guaranteed. Removing 0.1 millimeter of material is sufficient in this case. Therefore, a modern head could be machined up to 10 times with minimal material removal, although the reality is that some scratches always occur when the mechanic takes it out and therefore, the number of possible machinings is considerably lower and close to two or three times. Some heads have marks or dots that, when they are no longer visible, indicate that the head can no longer be used. In old cars, roughly raising the compression from 9 to 1 to 10 to 1 ends up increasing power by 1 to 2% with the original ignition timing. Dimple Porting these golf ball holes look very nice to look at, but do they help at all? When a smooth ball travels through the air, an air tail forms behind it. This air tail sticks to the ball and increases the friction surface, so as there is more friction, the speed is reduced. The small dimples cause the air surrounding the golf ball to become turbulent, and therefore the tail doesn't form. By not forming the tail, the friction surface is reduced so much so that a ball with dimples can travel 50% further than a smooth ball. The Bugatti Bolide features an active roof scoop that incorporates approximately 60 small dimples which emerge at high speed, protruding up to 10 millimeters to optimize airflow. These dimples create a turbulent boundary layer, which reduces aerodynamic drag and lift by 10% thereby significantly improving its aerodynamic efficiency. Returning to the cylinder head, there are surfaces that are 100% polished, rough or with these holes. The reality is that rough sanding usually gives the same results as dimples, so the manual work of making the holes doesn't make much sense, especially if the engine is turbocharged. In NA engines, some claim improved filling up to 10%, but I never found any real well-done tests. Maybe you can tell me in the comments. Polished intake ports have the advantage of preventing fuel from sticking to the walls, but they deliver a laminar airflow that worsens fuel-air mixing. 
The reality is that depending on the application, and especially the type of car, one design may perform better than another. In exhaust ports, a polished finish is always preferred, since turbulence in this area is excessive and causes the gases to move slower. Also, since the surfaces are polished, there is less contact area, and therefore less heat is absorbed. Still, it is always recommended to remove any burrs or noticeable imperfections left from the manufacturing process of the cylinder head, such as small ridges. The shape of the port. To increase the airflow entering the cylinders, the current duct with a sharp angle can be filled with weld and a new hole made from the top. High RPM motorcycles use almost vertical intake ports. Square ducts exist too, and round ones as well. Given the same duct surface area, since the valves are round, the round duct is better and has slightly higher performance, especially on high revving engines. Anyway, square ducts are widely used because they make better use of space, and in a very compact cylinder head, a larger square duct can be installed, which ultimately ends up delivering better results. Square ducts are better suited for low RPM engines, since they produce more torque. But when transitioning from a square duct to a round valve, a lot of care and study are required. That is why round ducts are preferred for high-performance, high-RPM engines. The size of the ducts should always be smaller than the valve, approximately 85% of the valve size near the valve seat, and around 97% in the area farther away. This is to maintain high gas velocity. Enlarging the ducts can be detrimental and is directly related to the camshaft. Regarding the material, aluminum cylinder heads conduct heat better and are lighter. Since they are located at the top of the engine, this is very important as it lowers the vehicle's center of gravity. The downside is that if the temperature spikes due to a failure, they can withstand less heat than steel heads. Don't forget to leave your super thanks and subscribe to the channel. Leave your like and share with your friends. You can always leave me suggestions in the comments. See you in the next video.